welcome back. Still so tuned into Startup Central. Now, as promised, we've got EdTech startups. They've clearly been the real winners this year. And one such success story is that of Talent Sprint, of which NSC Academy has picked up a majority stake. The company actually provides deep learning tech courses and has partnerships with premier institutes in India as well as with the corporate world. Let's connect then with the MD and CEO of Talent Sprint. We've got Santanu Patel now joining in on the show. Thanks so much, Santanu, for being with us. While I know you're not really going to divulge any details regarding the valuations or the deal, I'll skip that and talk a little bit about the spaces itself. Because in recent times, we have seen this high demand for skill acquisition, upgradation to newer technologies. How does Talent Sprint plan to remain technologically at the forefront? That's a great question and a very relevant one. Uh, if you have observed a portfolio of offerings over the last three years, uh, we are the only player uh, in the only platform today which has directly uh, outstanding partnerships and great uh, deep tech programs with IIM Calcutta, IIIT Hyderabad, IIT Kanpur, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, uh, Google and Pegasystems, just to take a few names, uh, both in terms of top tier academic brands and top tier corporate brands. And our joint programs are highly aspirational in nature, both for working professionals as well as for young professionals. So I guess one thing that has come out over the last few years, like you rightly said, is that there's a massive demand among working professionals and new college, young graduates coming out of colleges to really build up the future proof skills. So we call this the development of the workforce of the future. And uh, in some sense, Challengement is a pioneer in the space. There are very few companies with the kind of partnerships we have, the kind of programs in AI and machine learning and uh, computational data science and cybersecurity and fintech that we have developed. So we are seen as a product innovator. And of course, to your point, uh, we need to be continue to stay ahead. Uh, but innovation has never been a problem. It's one of our strengths. Okay, now given that the company uses online and on-site models in partnership with a lot of academic institutions and global corporations, are you seeing a major shift now in the mode of education in the long term? Because of course, in terms of the pandemic, we have seen this complete adoption to online education, this work, working from school phenomenon with the use of laptops as well as mobile phones. But is it long term in nature, according to you, the way we're seeing a shift for the education sector as a whole? I think uh, it's uh, the trigger may have been the pandemic, but the structural shift, I think, is going to be largely permanent and perhaps uh, irreversible in many ways. Uh, largely because if you think about it, uh, you know, I think online education used to be a question mark. People used to question its uh, applicability, its, uh, you know, effectiveness. I think all those questions are behind us. And if you look at the future, working professionals in particular don't have the time of day to take long leaves and go attend on-campus programs. They want basically online programs with some degree of campus contact built in, but they want experiential programs taught by great brands, taught by both practitioners in industry as well as academics in, in top tier schools. So in some sense, a hybrid model works in both ways. We are a hybrid in the sense that our content has academic content from our top tier academic partners. It also has practitioner content from our corporate connects. So we have got, got a pracademic bent of mind, so to speak, where we combine practical knowledge with academic training in our programs. And the other part of the hybrid is, of course, how we do it, which is 80-90% uh, of our programs are delivered live online classes on our platform, which is a patent pending platform called iPearl.ai, which is getting a lot of great uh, reviews. It's in fact the platform that runs all of IAM Calcutta's current uh, MBA online as well. So therefore, uh, in a hybrid mode, to answer your question, I specifically believe that I don't think we're going to go back to a pure classroom era ever again. We're going to see a series of new innovations coming in a hybrid model where it will not be entirely online, but largely online going forward. So just to stretch that point forward, um, what kind of opportunities have you seen present themselves due to the COVID pandemic and what have been some of the key challenges? Yes, I think COVID and, uh, and, and sort of I would say if you take the totality of the view of COVID, it has really provided a huge amount of tailwind to all kinds of online education, not just uh, uh, professional education like what Talentsprint offers. But even if you think about college education or you think about high school and K-12, I think uh, you can see all around you what's happening with their tech companies. They're like in the news every day, and I'm sure we are one such example, but certainly not the only one. Uh, therefore, I would say that COVID has essentially opened up people's minds to the possibility of education being something that's possible to deliver using technology. 
I think uh, maybe 10 years ago, the country went through a transformation accepting that you know, e-commerce is also commerce and you can actually buy things online and you have certain kinds of new features that come from it like COD or return, etc., which are new concepts altogether that people got used to. And, and finally today, in fact, there's no going back from that. So therefore, in, the, in a similar sense, I think, and another example I'd like to share with you is what happened with digital payments. I mean, 2016, after demonetization, you know, all of a sudden we started seeing this UPI come to the fore. And um, for example, I think, uh, four years ago, there was a million UPI transactions a month. Today, there are 2 billion UPI transactions a month. And that's with a B and not an M. So we've seen enormous uh, explosion of technology in different sectors based on certain, you know, what I call inflection moments, right? Inflection points. So just as demonetization was an inflection point for fintech in this country or payments tech, I think clearly COVID is a similar inflection point for edtech in this country. And what have been your financials over the last one or two years by way of revenues and profits? Can you detail that? Yeah, I, I, I understand your uh, intent, but I'm, I'm sort of, uh, as a privately held company, venture-backed, you know, we don't disclose our financials. Of course, somebody who's, uh, you know, wants to do the homework and figure it out. But fundamentally, we are a company approaching 100 crore run rate in top line. We are a profitable company, one of the few companies in the space which is, growing fast, has great uh, product range, and is also broken even. So we broke even a year ago. So one of the attractive parts about this current transaction uh, with NSC uh, Academy is that I think we're now going to marry the strengths of a lean, agile, highly innovative startup like Talisman with the brand and scale and reach of NSC's you know, uh, enormous, uh, I would say, gravitas. And I think that combination we think is going to be the big game changer for the industry going forward. Okay, fair enough. Um, what is the long-term goal for the company? Are you in talks with any other investors? Not really. This is a strategic investment and uh, the expectation is that, uh, like I said, uh, with this majority stake, uh, NSC Group, NSC Academy is becoming the majority shareholder on the cap table. From this point on, uh, NSC will continue to buy more and more shares and buy out all the minority shares and promoters over time. So in some sense, we are headed in the next few years to becoming a fully owned company of the NSC Group. Okay, and you know, given that there's quite a bit of competition in this space, what's the game plan? How do you plan to stand out? What is the, you know, what is the plan to stand out among the competition? That's an excellent question. Uh, in fact, the market is maturing. It's no longer a single market, right? In some sense, uh, we are not going to be uh, all things for all people in ed tech. Uh, even within the category of professional learning, Talent Sprint has a very clear signature that it does great work in deep tech education. Like I said before, you know, um, uh, when we work with management schools, we work on applications of AI in marketing or applications of tech in finance. We don't do the standard management uh, leadership courses, for example. So our approach has been that no matter what we do, we're going to be with very deep tech uh, focused in the sense that emerging technologies are going to be our forte. And we're not going to be trying to do everything for everybody. So our, our focus is very sharp, very clear. Focus on those professionals in the banking, financial service, technology, and consulting industries who are disrupted by emerging tech like AI, machine learning, and blockchain. Uh, we are not trying to be a management education provider or any such thing. So. Uh, that is the differentiation. So in a sense, uh, we will always be a player for serious professionals looking for serious uh, high-end learning. And all our partner brands recognize that, which is why the top schools in the country are partnering with us and not with anybody else. All right, we'll let you go on that. No, thanks much for taking time out and joining in and sharing with us the outlook for the business. And with that, then we'll wind it down right here on Startup Central. Thanks so much for watching. Have a lovely weekend.